In this video, I wanna give you some tips that have literally, for some of the stickings that I use, doubled my speed like overnight. And it, what it was was a mindset shift. So this is a, I've been wanting to do this lesson for a while. So I really hope you get a lot of use out of it, okay? And we're gonna jump right into it. I'm not gonna beat around the bush, anything like that. Let's just kind of jump right into it. We're gonna be talking about the motions of the stick in this lesson. That's so, so important. And we're gonna use rudiments, but you can apply this to any sticking. Uh, rudiments are just different stickings. A paradiddle is just right, left, right, right. It just has a different name, right? A flam is a certain set of stickings. Double stroke roll, certain set of stickings. So what we want to do is we want to look at the actual motion of the sticks and the notes that they're playing. And by looking at that, that will inform us how we need to move, how those strokes go together, and how we can speed that up by not focusing on speed. For so many years, I focused on speed, 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 speed with my playing. And the transformation for me and for my students comes whenever we stop focusing on that, because that's not, you're just gonna hit a wall all the time. When we start mo focusing on the mechanics and the motions of how we're moving, that's where the real change comes in your playing, okay? And it comes very, very quickly. Okay, so we're gonna take a couple of different rudiments, stickings, and look at them. We're gonna be looking at a paradiddle, we're gonna be looking at a flam, Swiss Army triplet is another one, we may look at a paradiddle diddle, but they're all stickings and I'll explain them as we go. Okay, let's start with a flam, okay? A flam is essentially a grace note, so a softer note attached to a primary note. And it sounds like this. Right? On a drum, it's gonna sound more like this. This is the trick that helped me, and it's such a simple thing. What I do is I put one hand on my leg, and then one hand on the pad or my snare drum, and I observe the motions of each hand. So the motions for an alternating flam, that means we do a right-handed, then left-handed. The motion, I'm just gonna do them and observe my motion. That's what the right hand is doing. Now let's look at what the left hand is doing. Exactly the same thing the right hand is doing. Now the cool thing about this is, this is a molar pumping motion. This is a molar two stroke, so we have a down stroke, and when we come up, there is a natural stroke that can happen with the up stroke. It's down and then up. And naturally I can make use of that instead of down and pick the stick up myself. Down, and when I pick the stick up, there's another stroke that can happen. This is essentially a molar two stroke, as I know it, or molar pumping motion. And we can speed that up. So I can do that motion very fast, right? And at some point you start looking like you're having a conniption. I can do that motion very fast with each hand. But for some reason when I get to flams, I'm like, okay, I gotta concentrate on this flam because it's, but if I concentrate instead on interlacing the two hands, Immediately, I understand that it's just this motion in both hands. So now all I have to do is focus on interlacing that motion. I really am not even listening to the sound much at all until I understand the motion. Then once I understand the motion, then I start listening to the sound and I, I level that sound down. So before, you know, my flams, I'm sitting there just trying to do the motion and flam. Now a flam, now a flam, now a flam. And now I know it's like, oh wow, so it's this fluid type of emotion. And if I, if I can't do this well, I can't play a flam well. So I know I need to focus on that. I don't need to focus on this to get faster. And then all I need to do is start condensing that motion. And as I condense that motion, I naturally play my flams faster. but it's just this. In each hand, it's just this, right? Let's go to a same-handed flam. So instead of alternating, we're going same-hand flam. Isolate the motion, look at that. What is that? That is what we call the free stroke, or the Gladstone stroke. Essentially, it is a stroke that is thrown down and we have maximum rebound, and all I'm doing is following the stick. The stick is just doing that rebound for me. So if I know that, and then I go, okay, so when I'm accenting it, it's just that. When I'm not accenting, it's kind of a smaller version of that, it's a tap. So if I know that and I can play this fast with my free stroke, I should be able to play my flams that fast. Alternating the same thing, but it's a different motion. That's why when you go to alternating flams, you have problems. It's not the same motion. But if we'll focus on the motion of the stick, 
The speed comes naturally. I tell my students all the time in my drum school, speed is a natural byproduct of learning something well. Get the motions down, spend a long time doing this, then spend a long time trying to interlace them. At no point are we focused on speed. We're just focused on fluidity of the motion, okay? So there's an example with alternating hand flams, and there's an example with same hand flams, right? On the same hand flams, we've got more of a free stroke or a Gladstone stroke. I have a whole uh, Hand Technique 101 and Hand Technique 102 in my online drum school. I go in depth on all of this stuff, like it is step by step. There's a 14 day free trial. Uh, it's I think it's in the video description or a pinned comment. So I don't know, just look below the video, you'll find it somewhere. Okay, let's move on to something else. I don't wanna get hung up there. Okay, let's go to Paradiddle. So I was taking a lesson, I still take lessons when I get an opportunity to, and I'm, I'll, many times I'm having my own self evaluated to make sure I'm teaching correct, fun fundamentals. So I had a couple lessons with Klaus Hessler, and Klaus Hessler uh, took from Jim Shapin. He's he's part of that whole lineage, Sanford Moeller, Jim Shapin, uh, and, and, and you know, Klaus after that. Uh, Dom Famolaro would be another one that's fantastic to watch on that. Um, and so I was taken from him, and, and, and I was having him observe some of the things I was doing, some of the rudiments, some of the things like that. And when it came to the paradiddle, again, it was one of those, boom, it was a mental shift. And he said, look, the motion of the paradiddle is just a three-stroke molar. And many of you are like, okay, I don't understand what that is. Okay, so let's look at what the motion of the paradiddle is. Paradiddle is right, left, right, right, an accent on that first one, and then an accent on the first single uh, left on, when you turn it around. So it's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Okay, so many of us are like right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. We're like trying to stroke all of this out just with our wrists on, on the drum pad, right? What I, what I want you to do is look at, the, look at the natural motion. So let's see what the right hand is doing. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. That looks a lot like this, doesn't it? Left hand. It looks like the same motion, and that's what Klaus pointed out to me. He said it is the same motion as a three-stroke molar. A molar stroke is where we have a, a initiated motion that is kind of a whipping motion. It comes down, we have a rebound, and then when we pick it up, that's the third. So one, rebound, up. Down, rebound, up. Down, rebound, up. And we can get that going very fast by utilizing the rebound. What's cool is when you interlace those, because the other hand is only doing that. So when we're doing this, see how the speed just comes naturally? The speed comes naturally because I had the motion down well. And if I can play this motion this fast, I should be able to play single strokes that fast in that accent pattern. Right? So that's the power of that motion. And you're like, Stephen, that's not a paradiddle. Watch. So it's the same motion. What we do is we start that motion, and I'm just focused on getting that motion down. And what I want to do is put a diddle on the second right hand. Right? So if we do that on both hands, it's hard to do that on my leg. If we do that on both hands, this is the basic motion. Remember, we're just focused on motions, not the notes. Now, put an, put an uneven crushed diddle out of time. Same motion. Now, start to smooth that out. Notice the motion of my hands. The motion of my hands is not changing. What's changing is I'm stretching the diddle out a little bit and controlling it a little bit more. Starting here. So I know if I can do this motion pretty fast, I should be able to do my paradiddles pretty fast. And that's a Boom, that's an instantaneous change that happens by focusing on the motions, on the stickings. That's why I'm so dead set on learning good fundamentals.
I'm not a technique hound. It is to serve the music. But at some point, it's like, okay, let's step back and see what we're doing, what we're doing wrong. Let's look at another one. Let's look at, um, well, now that we're on paradiddles, let's look at a paradiddle diddle. Right, left, right, right, left, left. Let's isolate the hand and see the motion they do. Uh-oh. What is that right there? It's just two strokes, but I'm diddling one. That's that pumping motion again, isn't it? And if I do this, and then begin to smooth that out, what we have is, instead of this, so if we add those diddles and don't smooth them out, so, once you start smoothing them out, it's the same motion. Okay, you're just adding at the bottom of there an adjustment to that motion. Yes, there's some adjustment to it, but that's the motion of it, okay? Okay, let's do one more, and this is, this is the one that, oh my gosh, it was like, I just sat there and I remember looking at the pad going, hold on, wait a minute, it's just double strokes? And then immediately, and I was like, if I can play my double strokes this fast, I should be able to play this rudiment this fast. Remember, rudiment equals sticking. That's all that means. Okay, so we're gonna do a Swiss Army triplet. We learned what a flam is. What a Swiss Army triplet is, it's a right accented flam, right, left. It's the same hand rudiment. It doesn't, the sticking on a paradiddle turns around. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, every time you play it. This one is a same hand sticking. Remember we had hand-to-hand -hand flams, or we could do same hand flams. This is a same hand rudiment. So to turn it around, we have to play something like a flamadiddle or something, or a windmill to turn that around. That rudiment is that. And for years I was just stuck, because I was like right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, just kind of in this hard spot of like sticking, 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 sticking. That's all I was thinking. Look at the motions. And I heard people call it a dirty roll for years, and I didn't understand that. It's a dirty roll because it's essentially double strokes overlapping on each other. And I didn't understand this, so here we go. I'm gonna isolate it. Oh, snap. Look, that's just a double stroke. Now, look, let's isolate the left hand. Oh my gosh, it's just a double stroke. It's just double strokes. It seems so much more complicated. That's why you don't learn a Swiss Army triplet before you learn a double stroke roll. There's a sequence to learning all of these uh, because the stickings interweave. Now, if I can play my double stroke roll, that's what I was sitting there and I'm like, okay, bro, so if I can play my double stroke, it's like I was doing math or something. You know, I had this epiphany. I'm like, if I could do my double stroke roll, this fast, because at that point, I was like this with my Swiss Army triplets. And I'm like, if I can do my double stroke this fast and it's just double strokes, I should be able to do my Swiss Army triplet that fast. And it took me a second, I was like, okay, hold on, it's just double strokes. And then all of a sudden it started speeding up and I was like, oh, this makes sense. Oh, it's just double strokes. That's why they call it a dirty roll, right? Immediately, almost doubled my speed on that sticking because I paid attention to the mechanics of the sticking. And what we can do is we can go from a double stroke roll and we can morph into a Swiss Army triplet. If I do that on the snare, let's, let's get some snare action in here. If I do that on the snare, we got a double stroke roll. And I'm gonna start interweaving them. I'm gonna start, uh, Klaus Hessler does a, a great teaching on compressing the rudiments, bringing them together. So we have double stroke roll. See how the doubles don't speed up or slow down? The doubles are going the same pace. I'm, I'm messing with the placement of them and overlapping them. You can really hear it when I do it on two sound sources. So we have it like this. Right? And if we keep going, they become a single, a unison, and a single. So if we go a Swiss Army triplet. Yeah. 
And if you keep compressing it, it actually comes out the other side and becomes a left-handed Swiss Army triple, and then it becomes a left-handed double stroke roll. It's, it, and then you can compress it back the other way if you're just really bored. Um, so that is, that is what doubled my speed on things like the paradiddle, Swiss Army triplet, flams, just literally sitting there and going, wait, it's this motion, hold on. So it's not just hours and hours and hours, it's, it's just observing and then spending, yes, you may need to spend hours on that motion, but once you get that motion down, then you're able to do the others. And this is why I'm so hard on my students about, hey, go through the technique, uh, hand technique 101 and 102, go through all 16 of those lessons, you're gonna come out at the other end and you're gonna understand why those mechanics make so much sense, not just in rudiments, but in stickings in general.